Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in preparation of me street tuning the D16Y8, we're gonna install a AEM wideband gauge and sensor, um, and I'm gonna make it fully detachable. So let's get to work. All right guys, so this is the AEM uh, gauge and sensor that I got. Um, here's the gauge, I already opened it up obviously, so um, I could print this. This way I could have a holder for it right away uh, and stick it into the car. Um, so this comes with the gauge obviously, and then as well as the sensor and a whole bunch of wiring. Um, so we're just gonna start by getting this all wired up and looping the sensor and all that stuff into the car. All right guys, so we're gonna start off by removing this. Um, this is the narrow band, so I already ripped it off. Um, so we're just gonna detach all the wiring and all that, and then we're gonna start installing the other one. All right, now that the old gauge is removed, I'm gonna utilize the same spot here for the new gauge. So that is where my new holder goes, have some double-sided tape here, and I'm just gonna stick it on. So I'm gonna stick it on first, and then I'm gonna mount the uh, AEM gauge onto it to see where I like it the most, because I could just screw it in afterwards. So let's do that. All right, the gauge is all mounted up here. I did 3D print a backing here that helps with screwing it in. Um, so it's held in place. It's, this thing is really tight fitting anyways. The gauge wouldn't have gone anywhere even if without the backing. Uh, unfortunately, the one that came with AEM just doesn't fit here because obviously it's on an angle like this, right? So this is where I'm gonna mount it. I think it looks pretty good right there. Um, I'm gonna probably take it out after I'm done tuning anyways. So it's not a permanent thing. I don't want anything permanent to be sitting on the car anyways. Um, if it is going to be permanent, I would have a better location for this, but for now, this is where it's gonna stay. All right, now it's time to do the wiring. Um, one of the wiring is going to come from the gauge and go all the way to the ECU. And then the other one is a harness that goes from here all the way out into the engine bay and into the O2 sensor area. I haven't mounted the O2 sensor yet, uh, but we will do that. I guess we'll do that first and then we'll run all the wires. All right guys, so the O2 sensor is gonna go on this spot here. Um, since I don't wanna take off the one in the front, and this will retain both O2s. Once I'm done with the, the uh, wide band, I can always remove it and put this bolt right back in. Um, so I'm just gonna remove this bolt and then pop the sensor in. Uh, the only issue is I think it might have a little bit of clearance issue because of my CV axle right here, but uh, we will see once we try and install it. And here we go with the new O2. Get a twister in there. It's easier to do it with two hands, so I put the camera down. Right there, nice and tight. All right, so I'm gonna run the wire through that grommet right there. That's the firewall grommet for the um, AC. Um, since there's no AC in this car, I'm just gonna use that grommet there. Um, I do have another one that has been kind of cut open when I guess the previous owner put in um, uh, Amp kit, uh, so I'm gonna probably put that one in because it has a slit in it and then I'm just gonna shove the wires through This is the firewall grommet that I was talking about uh, Previous owner had some stuff drilled into it and you know, I, I found it really ugly So I got I have a new one in the car, but since we're gonna be running wires through here This is what I'm gonna be using and as you can see, that runs right into the car. You can already see the ECU from there. So this is a perfect spot. All right, so I got both of my wires running through here. These plug into the back of the gauge here. So I'm just gonna plug these in and then we're gonna go through the wiring. All right, so here's the harness that you gotta connect for wiring wise. So just like the narrow band, you're gonna only use three of these wires. Essentially the blue wire is useless. Um, red and black, obviously power, and ground and this is your signal wire we're going to do it a little different than what we did in the narrow band this is all going to be wired to the ecu um unfortunately i don't want to wreck my harness there so we're going to do something different what we're going to do is we're going to take say the signal wire which is this white wire here i'm going to depin this 
and I'm going to use bullet connectors to connect it onto here so that I could just unplug this and then plug a bullet connector onto here and plug it in. So we're going to crimp that as well as we're going to wire up oh, or solder up some of these, these pins that I have onto the power and ground and then we're going to put it into the harness. Um, so the, the wires that you're going to need is the signal wire is a D14 which is this bottom one right here on the D harness so A, B, D. I don't know why it's like that but D. So it'll be the um, seventh from the left on the bottom here. For power it would be harness A. So it would be the last two so 20, 25 and 26. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but essentially, yeah, if you do a Google uh, or if I, if I get a chance, I'll put the picture up. Um, it's essentially um, this red wire here and the brown wire here. Red wire is um, uh, power and the brown wire is the ground. All right, as you can see, I've depinned it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off. Same with on this side, we're going to cut that off. And we're going to attach some uh, bullet connectors, which are like this on there and then we're gonna just plug it in that way it's detachable and i can plug it in anytime i want all right so i wired it up like this basically um here let me detach it and show you guys all right so basically it's like this um if i wanted to connect it back to the regular o2 i just plug it in like that these two connect and you're good I've also wired up another one wire here with one of these connectors for, you know, the narrow band. If I ever want to put the narrow band back, that way I could just plug the narrow band into here. Except instead of doing the whole pinning thing where I plug the a pin in here. Um, the rest of it, the power and the um, and the ground, I'm going to have to pin because, you know, I, I don't really want to muck around with this harness. I like it looking like this, all nice and clean. So we're going to do it like this. Um, as well with this here, these wires, I'm going to put another one of these bullet connectors onto the white wire so I can just plug it in here because you're going to have to disconnect the signal wire for your narrow band to plug in the wide band. All right, so this is basically how the wiring is. I capped off the blue wire because it's not being used, so I put some heat shrink on that. This one is my attachment to the narrow band that I might just might connect again later so i'll put some heat shrink on that um, this is the original signal wire from the original narrowband o2 put some uh heat shrink on that to cap it off um, so here is the white wire that's connected to the uh wire to the ecu um, over here i've pinned in the power and then on the bottom here on the brown i've pinned in the ground so now this is actually fully detachable if i wanted to pull this out i just yanked this out and it's all detachable everything still looks super clean and all that stuff so now we're just going to test it out and see if it turns on all right the moment of truth just giving it some power all right it turns on so i still need to fire up the car and check this but um for now it seems to be working fine um but it's a little late right now so i'm not going to fire up the car all right let's check if it works oh yeah it's powered on and it is fired up it takes a little bit of time for it to warm up because obviously the O2 sensor needs to warm up first But you can see it's already giving some readings. It's quite lean. Yeah, so now we could pretty much get started with the tuning thing. Alright guys, I forgot to mention that you actually have to calibrate this. So this was actually set to P04 in the settings, um, which is wrong. It should have been set to P00. So how you would calibrate it is you read your instruction manual, obviously, but at the back here, there's a little a hole. You put a small precision screwdriver in there, turn the gauge on, and then you just dial it into the um, setting. 
it'll it'll flash onto the setting like how it said P04, it'll say P00, P01, etc. So what you want to do is set it to P00, which is the default setting. Uh, for some reason, this was set at P04. There you go, guys. We've got the AEM wideband all set up and installed. Now we're ready for street tuning. So that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope this helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.